original hunger gangster, if you want to call them, they all went back here and started putting up their own murals and wild styles and stuff. Except they had all chosen their own walls, and the idea was they weren't allowed to go on each other's walls. So they had they'd staked out their territory. This is their place. And everything was going fine and dandy for a long time until Rob Ford came into power and declared his war on graffiti. Rick Mercer, you were asking about before, started doing his rants. Rick Mercer is a, what would you call him? Comedian. Comedian, but also a political comedian. Yeah. So he would do these rants on television about uh, everything and anything. And he kind of let people know that there was this really cool thing back here called Graffiti Alley because he did them all in the alley. And so everyone was coming down to check it out and Rob Ford saw that and said, uh oh, we gotta get to the bottom of this. So he started issuing notices to all the businesses on Queen Street West and said, you have to get rid of all this graffiti back here. So they all went to city council and they said, look, the graffiti's been here since 1990. It's not going away. Is there any chance you can give us a break here? He said, okay, no problem. This is the one place in Toronto where graffiti is completely legal. Whatever you want to do, you can do here. And that was great for a lot of people because all of a sudden all these new artists and kids and everyone came in here and started doodling all over the place. Not so good for the OGs who were here who had really nice murals and wild styles up that got completely ruined by these new lots. But now, I've seen this alley used by Rick Mercer, but also for engagement photos, wedding photos, music videos, fashion shoots, dancing videos, and also sometimes we'll even see graffiti artists doing their thing here as well. So hopefully we'll see that today. Come follow me. done by a guy called Scape, and what I kind of find interesting is that he's S-K-A-P-E, but he actually went over a scam wild style that was there, which is also S-K. Uh, this is a guy who the top scam. This is one that makes me very angry, and this is what's wrong with the alley right now. This has always been Elixir's wall. This is, he chose it because it's cool frame. This is also where I met Elixir, working on this piece last year. He had a black can of spray paint and the picture in his hand, and literally one brush stroke at a time. He did this really cool mural here. But it's been destroyed three times already this year, and this is a fourth time. And this time they've really sabotaged his wall. I know Elixir is quite upset by it because it's very disrespectful. There was no reason for that. There's the whole alley. Why choose here? Do you have any idea why? Were they just jealous or? They probably didn't know. They probably don't have no idea who he is. They didn't like it, so they went over it. There's no rules in the alley. If you guys want to start doing stuff today, go for it. Nothing's going to happen to you. It's completely legal. Do whatever you want here. That's cool. That's a stencil. That's a stencil, yeah. I'm not too sure who it's supposed to be, but it is a stencil. Up there is our first Uber 5000 mural. Now, here's the thing about Uber 5000. And I, I'm not going to say this if it's on video. I'm going to turn off for one second. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Make sure he doesn't. Anyway, so this mural here, uh, that top left corner is the Air Canada jet. And the reason why it says 150 at the bottom is because last year was the 150th anniversary here in Canada. That monkey climbing the CN Tower with the shirling jacket on is Darwin. Darwin the monkey belonged to a woman who drove to an Ikea. <laughs> and she went inside the Ikea while the monkey was in the car. The monkey got out of the car and he started running around the parking lot. So everyone took their pictures of Darwin and put it on social media. Unfortunately, the Toronto Humane Society saw the pictures, rescued the monkey, and told her, you can't have it back, you're not allowed to have exotic pets in the city. There's a little wee red guy at the top of the CN Tower, and that's Drake. Oh yeah, probably that was a for his off-car piece for six and got it. There's also a woman sitting on top of the crane, and that's Crane Girl. Crane Girl last year decided to climb a crane in, crane in Toronto, take a selfie, and then she called 911. so much that when he met him he actually gave him two pieces he did on his own for free and spent all of his money at his store to buy the paint. He was a big fan of scams. But anyway, Cash was really nice to meet too. He did this in one day. It took him one day to do. Alright, switch sides with me. I want to talk about this big teeth piece. Bacon does really cool murals but you can always tell it's worked by this really cool smoke effect that's in here. Anytime you see that really needs smoke it's definitely a bacon. Alright, follow me down this way. that they would like me for some reason. I walked up to them and I showed them my thing and I said, hi, I'm Aaron from the tour guys. What do you call yourselves? And they said, well, if you can read it, you deserve to know. And they went right back to spray painting. <laughs> so I have no idea what it says. They weren't very nice to me. <laughs> then this skull also got me into some trouble too. I knew in my heart that Gator is like Orek. He only ever does his name. I I okay. No, it's fine, you can carry okay. on, but I'll just walk away. Yep. I knew that he didn't have this kind of skill, but I saw the skull and I assumed it was Gator. So I was telling everyone that Gator did the skull. So I had a group just like you guys and I was telling that story. And all of a sudden another graffiti artist came around the corner and walked right up to me in front of my group and said, uh, who did the skull? And I was like, uh, Gator did the skull? He's like, no, 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 no. I did the skull. <laughs> I'm vamps. And then Gator put his bomb inside the head as if he had anything to do with it, but he didn't. So Gator did the bomb. Vamps did the skull down here. This wall has always been full of the creepiest stuff in the alley, that really weird Mickey Mouse, strange orange face. I love that Mickey Mouse. <laughs> you don't like that? Yeah, it is a bit weird, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> I have a funny story about this one here at the end. The weird teeth and the eyeball thing. So, there's a corner store near me that has a mural, a full-size mural of this exact character. So I went into the store and I said, hey, I do a graffiti tour downtown. I'd love to know the name of the artist that did this because he's done one here. And they said, oh, we don't know. And I said, didn't you hire him to do the mural on your store? No. You just showed up one day. Uh-huh. Well, do you like it? No. <laughs> Are you going to get rid of it? No, we're afraid to. They literally are freaked out because it's obviously freaky. All of a sudden they came to work one day and there's this big huge mural of this weird thing on the side of their wall. They don't know who did it. 
And because they think it's gang related, they don't want to take it down. So it stays there to this day. But this guy used his own time, his own paint, his own money to do this mural, and we still don't know who he is. And they're afraid to take it down. <laughs> yeah. I like this purple demon with the floating hat. But I want to talk about this wall. This wall is super important. And it's a perfect example of what's going in that's wrong in the alley. So, I discovered the alley by accident when I was riding my bicycle through here in 2012. And this memorial was here and I loved it. I took pictures of everything here at the time, which almost all of it's different now. But this was left untouched. It's a memorial for this guy, Benjamin Hart Robco, and his birth and death years are up there. But then someone came this year and did these peace signs. And I'm like, uh oh, that's not a good sign. And sure enough, right after that, this guy, Mr. Brand New, came in and did this stencil like an eyesore, eyesore. He's bragging about ruining other people's work, particularly a memorial. And as soon as he did that, everyone else started wrecking it and destroying it too. So then what he did, come over here. I'm sure you guys recognize that artist by now, right? This, in the corner there? Elixir. That's Elixir, Elixir, yeah. So that's also a memorial by Elixir. Mm -hmm. So those are his friends, Son of Soul and King Rain, a DJ and MC from the US. And I actually met the son of Son of Soul this year. His aunt and uncle brought his young son to come see the memorial. But Mr. Brand New did a stencil where that blue rose is vertically. It said, I'd rather stay asleep, stay asleep than woke. So then Elixir came, did the blue rose on top of it, and he wrote underneath, my friends died, respect it, don't write on it. He got right to the point. Elixir is basically totally fed up with all the people going through the alley and destroying his work, especially memorials. I mean, that's just so disrespectful. I can't imagine a worse thing you could do. Yeah. Come around this side, I want to talk about this wall. This is a memorial, uh, not a memorial, it's a wild style mix of a mural, that's what I meant to say. By Globe, Smokey, and Dunn. What's the political message that Smokey is trying to send us with this tree? If you cut down trees, everybody suffers. Exactly. They cut down a perfectly good tree where everyone could have lived to build four pretty little birdhouses. And if I know anything about those birdhouses in Toronto, they cost a million dollars a piece. And that's why it's surrounded by all this death and all the bats and everything else. Exactly. That's exactly what it's all about. And Cadence, is that the author, the artist? I'm not too sure what Cadence. No, Globe is actually Globe. I'm not too sure what cadence is. He just wrote that in there. Maybe it's a friend of his, or it's a girlfriend he's dedicating the piece to. I'm not sure. Oh, I think mean, the person wants to park here. Anyone who sells ice in North America has that sign. <laughs> and then you got the Toronto sign back there from these little square, little skinny ring, the black squirrel. Again, very Toronto, very clean. There's little dogs up there. Oh, that was cool over there, that pink one. Uh, yeah. It's an ad for the salon. Oh, is it? It says love is in the hair. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> yeah, let's get rid of this. But this piece, again, go all the way around the corner. That's one big long seat. Yeah, and that's actually neon paint. So if you actually shine ultraviolet light on it, it'll glow. I'll see. This one here is a piece by Bacon. You can actually see his name in there. The B, the A, C, O. C-O-N and all the smoke. There's another scam. Apparently that guy didn't like scam very much. And Nick Sweetman here did the koi on the corner. He does a lot of really cool animal stuff all yeah, around. Yeah, that's amazing. Man. Yeah, he's really good. That's probably one of the